welcome you all to the law excellence yojana series we are continuing with october 2022 yojana issue where we are covering chapter 3 that is safeguarding oceans here in this picture you can see where is earth's water you can see here 96.5 percent of water that is total global water is in the oceans points point nine percent and other saline water and 2.5 percent is fresh water the oceans are the most significant source of our present and future energy requirements about two-thirds of our earth surface is covered by water and the oceans hold about 96.5% of the entire earth's water there is about 70% of water in the protoplasm of millions of cells which is the basic biological unit of plants and hum human beings let's see the diversity in oceans different organisms are found in different ocean depths providing a colorful spectrum to marine life and its ecosystem according to the scientific studies so far about 2.5 lakh marine species have been identified all over the world the evidence of diversity is also found in their size they range from 0.2 micrometers of small sea creatures to about 110 feet long blue whales found in the sea the sunlight permeates about 200 meters below the sea surface called the sunlight or epipelagic zones there are different layers of the ocean as i mentioned in the previous slide ocean has different layers sunlight permeates about 200 meters below the sea surface called the sunlight or epipelagic zone you can see in this picture from 200 meters to 1000 meters the faint light of the sun percolates hence it is called the twilight zone or the mesopelagic zone the depth from 1000 meters to 4000 meters is called the midnight or bathypelagic zone Due to the absence of light, the creatures in this zone use bioluminescence. The water pressure in this zone is very high. The sea creatures here are primarily black or red in the absence of light. The average temperature here remains below 4 degrees Celsius in this region. And the final zone is the abyssal zone with a depth of 4000 to 6000 meters and is very dark and the temperature is almost freezing point. If you see in this images in the layers of the ocean, you can see here the sunlit zone, twilight zone, dark zone and abyss and the trenches. So let's see some of the innovative scientific research initiatives by the government of India. The research on the ocean organisms, minerals and other natural resources is being carried out by Indian scientists to deal with the effects of environmental pollution, anthropogenic interference and climate change on the ocean. I am giving you some examples of such efforts which are mentioned in the next coming slides as mentioned in the Yojana Maxim. The first one we are going to cover is R.V. Sindhu Sadhana Scientific Research. This is by the National Institute of Oceanography in Goa. This is focused on the Indian Ocean. The expedition team conducted a scientific analysis of proteins and genes in the marine organisms to understand the process which is occurring at the cellular level. The proteins act as markers and catalysts in the biochemical reactions which occur in the organisms that survive in different ocean conditions. Please note that the study of biology that deals with protein studies is called proteomics. It helps in understanding the impact of climate change, pollution and stress on organisms. 
the expeditions also studied the impact of trace metals such as manganese cobalt iron and nickel on marine organisms these trace metals present in small amounts of animal or plant tissue acts as catalysts in enzyme systems and energy metabolism they settle in oceans through continental water flow and atmospheric and hydrothermal activities the next we see is the deep ocean mission this was launched with the aim to explore the marine diversity in our country which is still unexplored it is a project launched by the ministry of earth sciences through this mission the government aims to conduct the exploration of the underwater world on similar lines as isro does for space if you see the image you can get the information that this deep sea mining through underwater vehicles and underwater robotics it asserts the exclusive rights to explore polymetallic nodules from seabed over 75000 square kilometer of areas in the international water so the development of ocean climate change advisory services is given the technology for sustainable utilization of marine bio resources is also done it also explores the deep ocean the energy from the ocean and offshore based desalination krill fishery from the southern ocean in this slide we see about the samudra yaan mission it is india's first unique manned ocean mission that aims to send men into deep sea in a submersible vehicle for deep ocean exploration and mining of the rare minerals it will send three persons in a manned submersible vehicle called matsya 6000 to a depth of about 6000 meters into the sea for deep underwater studies it will enable exploration of ocean resources for drinking water clean energy and blue economy it will make deep sea mining and exploration a reality by 2022 It is addressed as India's own traveler to walk the ocean bed. It's a part of the Ministry of Earth Sciences pilot project for deep ocean mining for rare minerals. It proposes to carry three persons in a submersible vehicle called Matsya 6000 to a depth of 6000 meters for 72 hours under sea. It is expected to become a reality by 2021-22. The project has been undertaken by the National Institution of Ocean Technology. The aim is to explore polymetallic nodules also known as manganese nodules from the ocean. India joins with us the Allied Club of Selected Nations including USA, Russia, Japan, France and China. In the conclusion, we see the increasing human population, tourism, release of industrial chemicals and fertilizers other physical interventions in the coastal areas are creating dead zones in the oceans it is very essential to curb these activities to save the oceans and their ecosystem as oceans will be the primary custodians of human existence in the future thank you